Hello, hello, and welcome back to Inspirations, where you can find encouragement to inspire a life. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz, and I'm continuing a series on keeping Christ in Christmas and beyond, an Advent devotional. Before I get started, if you would like to get a free copy in your email inbox for all 35 days that starts with the first Sunday of Advent to Epiphany, look below for the link. Each day has four scriptures to choose from and includes prayers, suggested songs, devotional thoughts, activity ideas, and instructions on how to use an Advent wreath. Now, on to today's devotional. If you are using an Advent wreath, light the first purple candle and the second purple candle, and the third candle, which is a pink candle, because it is the third week in Advent, and this candle represents joy. Let's start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that in you we can find exceeding joy no matter how much our hearts are troubled. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our scripture today is Luke 1, 39-66, English Standard Version. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a, fulfill a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And they would have called him Zechariah after his father, but his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted to be called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loose, and he spoke, Blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea, and all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. Here are my thoughts about this passage. I hope you find this encouraging. Blessed is she who believed there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Mary and Elizabeth meet in their pregnant conditions, and John as a babe in his mother's womb leaps for joy when he recognizes the Lord in Mary's womb. The women rejoice and are filled with wonder as the Holy Spirit descends upon Elizabeth. She pronounced Mary blessed, especially because Mary believes that what was told her from the Lord would be fulfilled, and it was. All generations, for sure, call Mary the mother of Jesus blessed. We can see that God's mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown his strength. He exalts the lowly and fills the hungry with good things. He helps his servant Israel. He helps us as those grafted into the family. The promise from Abraham is fulfilled in Jesus, the one who is born of that lineage. Jesus is that seed. So how can we experience his power and joy in our own lives, especially during this Advent season? First, spend time alone with God in his scriptures. Ask him to lay promises on your heart from scripture, and then believe that God is going to fulfill them. This faith in him will be 
will in the end bless you more than you can ever imagine. How do I know? Well, first of all, the Bible says so right there in black and white, and I've experienced it. And yet again, today, since my late teens, I have laid hold of God's promises to me through the word. Sometimes the fulfillment of them seems impossible. How easy it is to doubt. But this verse centers me, and it's good to come back to it and renew my faith afresh. I can see how he fulfilled promises to me in the past, and I can wait with hope that he will fulfill his promises to me in the future. May you do the same this Advent season and beyond. Let's end in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, comfort us in times of affliction and use it to bring us closer to you. In your precious name, amen. Here's a suggested activity for you and your family. Now, yesterday I mentioned watching The Chosen, the holy, I believe it's called O Holy Night. It's a merging of two of the shows that Dallas Jenkins produced. One is The Shepherd, and the other one is about Mary and Joseph. And, he, and Dallas Jenkins merged the two with a lot of, uh, also with a lot of different songs, including from Andrea Botticelli. I'm not Botticelli. I'm not sure I'm saying that name right. But anyway, my husband and I watched it tonight, and it includes a scene about this very psalm that Mary recited here that she wrote the, uh, you know, called the Magnificat. So it's definitely worth watching. But that really wasn't my activity today. I just wanted you to think about that. If you hadn't done that, that's a great suggestion. I highly encourage it. But here is something that could encourage you as you think about God's promises. Create two columns in a journal. On one column, on the left-hand side, put down your sorrows and burdens. And on the right-hand column, write down the joy that you anticipate will happen in the near future and beyond. That's it. All right, so that's all for the day. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for day 22 of our Advent series. We're almost at Christmas. And if you would like all of the devotionals sent to you in your email inbox, be sure to click the link in the description below. Do you want them all at your fingertips in an ebook PDF? I have all 35 days with the four scriptures each to choose from prayers, worship songs, suggestions with YouTube links and more activities. That's all something that you can purchase in a PDF. And so check below for that also. All right. So with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz. Together, may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond.